celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk. It's the End Wheel Time Car Show on today uh, today's three-hour live program. Uh, we'll get our SCCA monthly update. Mr. Mars reviews the Lexus ES350. The Lexus ES350. We talked to uh, a Swedish car enthusiast that I can't pronounce his name. We check our weekly events calendar, and we have the stories making auto news headlines this week. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show for Saturday, March 27th, 2021. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeff Zekin in the corner where he needs to be. Don Armstrong here with you. Glad that you could join us. Do we have Richard? Because I know that he called on the phone going something. It well, something must have been some sort of an emergency. Yes. No, it was a passcode thing, and uh, we're getting that straightened away right this very okay, second. Okay, of course we are. We, now, we've had uh, a whole hour here in the studio to get all of this ready for you. Well, but we didn't but, know until he went to log in that there was a passcode issue, and I'm still not sure why And you we hung up it. on him when he called. Well, uh, I thought yes. we were going on the air, and <laughs> yes. But I've since texted to him and emailed him. Both. See, these, no, these non-broadcast people, they don't know how to work the clock. I've been doing this for a while. A and it's long a long time. <laughs> You've been doing it since tubes. Back, I have, actually. <laughs> or back when it was a sundial, the where you had to <laughs> turn it upside down every 30 minutes. But, so, we, <laughs> but we are honored to be in your presence. Oh. Broadcasting Hall of Famer Don Armstrong. With his tablet and chisel. His Here, I'm, I'm hiding. Right, right, right. I'm trying to hide. His early audience was well, while, while, while those guys are over there doing that, I had to, something that I wanted to. It's actually it was going to be in the news segment. But this microchip shortage oh is oh getting boy. worse as we, as we speak. Um, as, I, I, don't even, I think I'm going to do this story. No, I'm not because this. I actually it's, have, it's bad. And it's, it's, it's getting worse it's every day by the second. And it's it's going to cost. And they're shutting down factories right and left all over the place. Of and the some most, of them of the most popular vehicles. And some of sold. them, yes, including the F-150 pickup truck. And uh, it, it's getting so bad that uh, they're looking at the middle of April. At the earliest, before starting the production lines, we're talking about tens of thousands oh, yeah, of yeah, vehicles easily. and all of the people that work to assemble them. But the people who work to assemble them, I don't think, are going to be without pay. I don't know about that, but they're going to be laid so off. I think the way the, the union's set up, they, they might be laid off. They might get to go home and do something, but I don't think they're going to be without pay. They I, may be a reduced pay, but they'll be paid. I don't know. Did you see it's the story bad. about uh, the Tesla? Just the one that ran into the cop on uh, auto drive or whatever. <laughs> no, Tesla's too. use of in-car cameras to record and transmit video footage of passengers to develop self-driving technology oh, raises safety bad. and privacy, privacy concerns, round according to Consumer Reports on uh, they on they Tuesday. Can consumer can advocacy organization said on its website that the usage potentially undermines the safety benefits of driver monitoring, which is to alert drivers when they're not paying attention to the road. Mm -hmm. Huh. Come here, baby. Hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> Last week, the Palo Alto, California EV maker said it studies some footage recorded from these cameras oh, after the fact as part of its <laughs> research into autonomous driving technology. Hey, Fred, come here. Watch this. <laughs> Hold my beer. And you know that's exactly oh, what's yeah. happened. Well, see, that was a big concern early on with OnStar because OnStar can turn the microphone on in your in your uh, vehicle. And, and what was and that listen. line? And what and what was that line from uh, Forrest Gump? <laughs> 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 For those of you, you know, were in the uh, never mind. The, the principal of the school was leaving his house. Yes, the automaker's internal cameras are also a point of contention in China, where the military banned Tesla cars from entering its complexes, citing security concerns. Yeah, that would make sense. Like, the, um, like the Wuhan virus lab. Yeah, like uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, I thought that uh, those were interest uh, interesting story. Well, you know, you, to this day, you still hear about people that 
disable their OnStar in their vehicle when they buy a new. I have never heard that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why you would do that. Didn't I mean, you really? Didn't you cover a police chase where they turned off the OnStar to disable the vehicle so they could the, apprehend the? The original system. It was just this week. Would shut the car down. Now OnStar slows the car right. down, doesn't just turn it right. off. Originally, the first software program of it, they would literally turn the car off, and they could keep the doors locked. So you were on, you were, you no, were I on think it was, it was your, it was your, it was your partner. I think it was his partner. Yeah, I, no, I wasn't involved in that. I did have a chase, but that it wasn't anything like that. But yeah, the, so mine there's... was the motorcycle motorcycle moron. <laughs> Oh gosh! And it was—it it could have been a Vespa. It was going so slow. Oh, you didn't do the guy on the crane? No, I, no, that, that was, was early morning. That yeah, was that Tammy. Was that morning. wasn't me. I was still in bed. That was before Don woke up. Well, I, I'm not awake now. <laughs> Mars, how are we looking over there with our guest? Well, it ain't working, is it? Okay, I got, so all, I got an audio. One ringy dingy. But <laughs> two ringy dingy. Some reason the video's not hooking up. Well, okay, so well. can we talk to him? Yeah, I mean he's on the phone. Well, so let's just uh, hear him. Hi, Richard. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Well, we don't know what's wrong with your video, but we really don't care because this is really a, an audio kind of show anyway. That's where we have our roots. And so uh, we're talking to Richard Tomlin, Apex Auto Works, and uh, we're talking about SCCA. Uh, where are you, at the beach or something? It sounds like uh, you got a lot of wind down there. Yeah, yeah we are uh, down uh, Hitchcock area at a place called Grand Sport Speedway. Um, was built as a test facility a few years back for uh, some of the C5 vets back in the day, and this is where they were doing their testing. And we're holding an event called the National SECA Solo Tour. Uh, so we got people from California, Washington State, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, all coming into Houston to play with us around the track and uh, see if they can beat us around our own cone setup. Well, I did not know that that track was built for the C5 Corvette, so what you're doing is inviting me down there to test my C5 Corvette. <laughs> Absolutely. We've been inviting you for a while. One of these days we're going to get you. Well, uh, yeah. It, it, you know, if, if you'd stop having these early Saturday morning <laughs> events, I mean, I, I would be good to go. Well, they well, do some, they do yeah. some Sunday stuff. What Sunday we Sunday need time. to do is we just need to go down there and do a remote broadcast from there with you there and just do it for yeah. the fun of it. That would be amazing. That would be really good to get you guys down here. Well, uh, you could actually see and touch some of the tin we've got. I know. And uh, we could do video. Uh, Mars can attempt we to could wear the tires out on Don's car. Yeah, well, they're already cracked, so we might as well just go ahead and ruin well, you, them all together. Use them up before they're gone. <laughs> His yeah. tires are aged out, right? Yeah, they're aged out. So, d would they still be safe, like the rest of us? <laughs> uh, we've got we've, we've got rules on that, and we can go over all that. But yeah, they can't be uh, too old for sure. Well, I mean, they're, they're, it's not like you know a 1960 tire or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, Jeffrey will tell you, six-year-old yeah. tires yeah. are too old to be driving. Five, on. five to six. Yeah, but I would go past five. Well, you're the real, you know, uh, I'm sorry. We'll have to have this discussion at a later date. But I, I find it interesting that TireRack.com uh, is sponsoring the event. It's the Solo National Tour, correct? Correct. Uh, TireRack's been one of our sponsors the entire time I've been in SECA, so 22 years. Um, they've been one of the foundational of getting these events to happen and sponsoring them. Um, we use them for everything from race tires to our trailer tires. They support us in everything we do. Well, so I could get me a good uh, discount there at, uh, at the tire rack for these new tires that I'm going to buy, huh? Correct. And as a uh, as a member, you get additional discounts too. So, well, I always um, I always use lots of benefits. I always use Tire Rack as a pricing platform because all these people say they price match. Most of them right. will price match, but not everybody does. And Tire Rack's got killer prices on it. And some of the brick and mortar stores do not honor a online price. Right. Really? Yeah. Well, the that's what they rebate, say. They, they have to be within so many miles of the brick and mortar. Oh. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Tire Rack. I've I've bought tires off of Tire Rack since '83. All right. So let let's talk about Grand Sport Speedway first of all. Uh, how long is the course? It's a road course, correct? It is the road course layout, so it's about 1.1 miles. Oh, okay. Um, laid out pretty pretty tight. Um, I don't, I mean, we call it a track. They call it a track. I, I call it a test facility because it's a little smaller than what we're used to. But for the autocross format, it works out really, really good. Well, I was going to say, because this is, this, so this is not a high-speed event. 
Um, we'll have cars here today that'll be 75 to 80 oh, um, my. in sections, nice but then we'll slow them back down to 20 to make a turn, and then right back up to 80, 75, 80. Well, you got to know what so. you're doing to do that kind of a spread. Oh yeah, these are. Uh, I would say you probably got the top 10 percent of these drivers in the country that are here uh, that are building up to the nationals event that happens in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, that'll happen in October, and there'll be. 1,300 people that show up there. To get oh one my God. So this is a points event within within SCCA? Um, this isn't really a points event. This is a stand, each one of them is a standalone event, but it pretty much tells you who's going to win at the year end. That's why everybody travels to them. So do you have to earn practice, your way practice, to the Nationals? or, or do you, No, you, you just bring pay your money. And go, They'll yeah, take your money. Just show up and pay. Yeah. Show so, up and pay. And but this event uh, is open to... And the event's open to the public to observe, right? I mean, you can spectators are allowed. The event is open to the public, and honestly, walking the paddock, you'll probably have the most fun there because you can get right beside all the cars. Um, 99% of these cars are driven to and from the events. Um, they'll pull in, change tires, put the flicks on, you know, stiffen up the shocks, maybe change some alignment settings, and then out they go on track. Okay, well, so, I don't uh, ha- All right. Well, I don't have s- uh, slicks, and I don't have some sort of special <laughs> alignment setting or any of that sort of stuff. What, what kind of class would I be in? Low. You would actually fall into what we would call a stock, and, and it's actually F stock. Lower. Um, so that's just F being the chassis, basically, how much uh, – how much horsepower you make, what weight you make, what your suspension looks like. But you'd be in what they call an F stock. We've got 37 classes um, that you can fall into. Uh, as you increase the performance of the car or suspension, more tires, um, that changes what class you fall into. So you can kind of find something for just about anybody that shows up. Well, it'll... if I show up, then it'll be anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There is something for everybody out here. Yeah, um, it is. It is pretty impressive how many classes we get. But you um, see, I, I, get a- I don't think that I would I would be uh, really, really drawn to this event because of the embarrassment factor. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. because, because I would be, I, I would embarrass myself because I don't know what I'm doing. I need to come down there to that track with you on, you know, just one of those kind of local kind of deals where, uh, yes, I would still be embarrassed, but not nationally. No, exactly. This is an opportunity to see some of the fastest people in the country um, racing around cones on an actual circuit. Um, no, no entry fee. You got to sign two waivers to come in. Uh, bring a face mask in case you're running around close with anybody, and uh, come down and talk with us. Be social. Houston region SCCA. We just cracked 1,000 members um, in wow. our region last month. Um, so thanks to all those Houston uh, members that are joining, and I think that's in part due to what Wheel Time has offered us uh, with this ability to speak about our events and what we do. So thank you guys. Very really appreciate it. Yeah. So this is for people to understand. This is just purely a timed event. This isn't competitive people that are multiple people on the track passing each other. You're you Right. We put we put 30 seconds between each car, sometimes 25, 25 30 seconds depending on the driver and the skill set. So you're racing on the track by yourself, but there's somebody coming behind you, yes. Um, at the point that you finish and you come off, you jump back in line. Today, they'll get three attempts at the course, and they take your fastest time of the three. Um, your goal is to stay off the cones, but get around the course as fast as possible. If you touch one of the orange cones and knock it over, then you get a two-second penalty. Yeah, well. And they'll make this 1.11 mile-ish course with all these cones and maneuvers in 48 to 54 seconds. Okay. How many cones are out there? Because I'm trying to calculate how many seconds I would be behind. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it's way too many. Way too many. Um, it takes about 350 cones to set up a course. Well, there you go. Times two. So Yeah, so J- Jeff would end up with penalties at about six minutes for a lap. <laughs> so the course you have set up, Richard, then, is pretty much on a on a flat piece of asphalt or concrete, not on a course that has, you know, that's a pre-determined course. In- Right. Traditionally, that's where we had all started, and that's how it used to be. But as things change in the modern world, um, parking lots aren't like they used to be. Now they've got these medians and trees and light poles yep. put everywhere, and it's uh, pretty difficult to race. Some people don't like us in their neighborhoods because we're a little bit loud. Um, so we've started migrating to test facilities, racetracks, uh, and using their parking lots or their facilities um, to hold these types of events. So the events themselves have changed a little bit. So we, I mean, you go back to the 70s, we were racing in Alameda Mall, uh, racing wow. Alameda Mall, I want to say 21 years. Well, I will so. tell you this, that Alameda Mall parking lot would be perfect because there's no business open in that <laughs> parking lot, and there are no trees or medians in there. Richard, you said that they after mm-hmm. they 
take the course, they pull off, and there's you know they, they can get back in line. Is does that give them an yeah. opportunity to like check tire pressure or uh, adjust any, things on exactly the suspension adjustments? Yeah, you'll see you'll see sway bar adjustments, you'll see shock adjustments, you'll see tire pressures, you'll see tires changed. Um, oh, you're wow. required to park for five minutes, i.e., so you get plenty of tire cooling. Um, you won't go back out there faster in five minutes, but some of the cars that would run what we call a street tire class, STO, they'll actually be using water sprayers to cool off the tires because the tire works better cold than right. it does hot in the right. lower durometer rating. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't so, know that. It's amazing. There's a lot of detail. Now, so, I have to – let me let me just butt in here and ask because I want to know, since I have a manual transmission, remember those? It's because you're a man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a manual transmission, so – how many, I mean, am I going to shift from first to second, second to third? How, how does that work? Um, most of the cars out here would be first to second. You'll have a couple cars that occasionally will go to third. Um, honestly, some of the new uh, dual clutch transmission stuff, they'll actually be in third gear just because of how the cars are being geared now. But most cars are set up for a first, second gear, and that's it. Like oh, okay. Run through the course. That'd be perfect never for me. Yeah. Unless you make a mistake. But, Don, you don't have paddle shifts, do you? you you got just a standard. Yeah, he's got a, he's just a standard. clutch pedal yeah, okay. in a row. Yeah. Yeah, which is probably 98% of the cars out here are exactly that. Clutch pedal, manual. This is uh, people who enjoy driving those things. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is an evolution of what used to be called Solo 2? Correct. Okay. Absolutely great. It's just called Solo now. Yeah. So what was used to be called Solo 1 is now what we call time trials, um, which we've talked about out there at uh, MSR with you guys before. Right. This is what we call Solo 2. Yep. Yeah, I, we did. Angie and I did some uh, solo two racing back in the uh, lit, late '80s. Me with my Oldsmobile company cars, and, and her All with kinds her, of fun with her personal cars. We love company cars. Oh yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Anything better than that's a rental. Yeah. Well, the, the the only problem was I think I finished like second in class, and they they posted me in the newspaper. <laughs> oh god! And did they find well, that out? At no, the... they didn't. But I was nervous as a cat that they would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, all I can think of is that uh, Avis or Hertz rental car that had the right rear tire on it down to the treads, uh, the threads of the yeah. tire. Yeah. Yeah, and turn that back in. Go get you a uh, court. What Hertz was renting the yellow Corvettes, mm-hmm. and I think they're still yeah. renting uh, Shelby's. Oh boy, I yeah. can't even I'll imagine get... how much that rental would be. But you know, uh, you back... can't rent one around here. Yeah, well, all I can think of is, is you know, the actual regular mom and pop. Old cutlass, you know, with not certainly no traction back on the back end of it, and just light that right rear tire up, kind of like I did mom's Buick Skylark. It's got to be beige, <laughs> too. Leave one black mark all the way through the intersection. <laughs> That's it. And I know hey, that you're familiar you with that, Richard. Yeah, I'm quite familiar with that, actually. Uh-huh. Um, my family was Plymouth, but still. Um, 99, 2000s, when the Dodge Neon was a hot thing, the uh, SRT, oh, yeah. the yeah. ACRs. Yeah. Um, Hertz was renting those, and we had a class that was called H-Stock. And we would have people would actually take their four wheels, put them in a UPS box, ship them. Then they would fly. Oh, we Did lost. we lose them? So they'd, fly, they'd ship a set of wheels and tires to the track. They'd fly in, rent an SRT, Neon, take it to the track, slap their racing wheels and tires on it, run their time trials, put the factory wheels and tires back on it, and then... Uh, turn in the rental and ship the and tires turn back. The, is that, did we lose you, Richard? No, we're he's, back. He's, back. he's back. He's back. So, in other words, no, you, yeah, you, you, it'd be one of those cars that you'd wind up seeing maybe a year and a half later on the Hertz... Uh, used car lot for sale, and you know that thing had been ragged out to no end. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, some un- unknowing suspect would wind up buying it going, you know, it's got some rattles and some weird things going on underneath the hood that we're not sure where that came from. They lined the fender well with rubber for it. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. Think, I don't think they identified those cars that went into the Hertz rental fleet the way that they did the early Shelbys, the GT350Hs, or the Corvettes were identified because there was an RPO code from Chevrolet that that was a Hertz Corvette. Oh, when they were selling, wow. the, when they were putting the Corvettes in, yeah. in Hertz rental fleets. So, so did you bring something to run today down there? Um, no, we drug a Miata down here, but we're actually not running today. We're actually going to be headed down to MSR Houston, uh, down south of Angleton for some action today. 
uh, we're out here now just making sure everything's up and going and ready, uh, um, shaking babies and kissing hands, and uh, then we will be uh, heading south. Wow. Well, you've got your plate full Busy today. Busy guy today. Yeah. So what's going on nah, down that's at... how it goes. So what's going on down at MSR? Uh, driving experience. So taking some uh, inexperienced people out and getting them on track. Okay. okay. Well, that would be my cup of tea. <laughs> teaching, and, teaching 101. Yeah, well, that would and, be me. And, Don, you could do it in your Corvette, or you guys, they still have the uh, the, the rental fleet down Mercedes. there, don't they? The Mercedes, yep, rental Mercedes fleet. rentals. Absolutely. Yeah, so you could take a Mercedes. Pretty amazing for a stock up. car, what they're capable of. Yeah, so I got a, I got a, uh, a hot rod tour around there uh, a few years back. Uh, with, uh, I can't remember the lady's name that was there at the time. She's not there any longer, but she was a very experienced driver, and she took us around there in that Mercedes, and I was thoroughly impressed. Well, we did, you know, we, we did the Cadillac driving experience there. Johnny yep. O'Connell, I think, was the professional driver that was there, and we took the uh, uh, CTSVs around and beat the daylights out of them. Yeah. Well, Richard, uh, good luck today over there in Hitchcock at the... Uh, National Solo SCCA Texas Champ Tour and uh, at Grand Sports Speedway. It's good to talk to you, and we'll check in with you again uh, next month. All right. We'll be around. You guys enjoy. Talk you, to you soon. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll stop by the shop uh, this week. Great for some good yeah, BG yeah. products. Th ready. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> All right. Richard uh, Tomlin, uh, he's our go-to guy with SCCA here locally, and we always thank him for joining us because he's got, obviously, a very busy schedule. Yeah. All right, uh, time now for this hour's car review. Well, actually, well, let's do the events calendar first. And then Mr. Mars is going to review the Lexus ES350. So um, tonight, starting at uh, 3.30, uh, is the Texas, or excuse me, Friday starting at 3.30 was the Texas Mile. That was yesterday. yesterday. Right, but it's going on in Beeville all the way through Sunday. So some of the fastest cars in the country are going to be here. Standing mile, how fast are you going at in the end? a straight end line? A straight line. What is this, some old airport or something? Yeah, it's an airport. It's an airport. In Beeville. In Beeville. Well, clearly it's not open to aircraft. It's a mile, <laughs> what, mile and three quarters, almost a two-mile really? track. Really? Yeah. And, so you could and land the space shuttle there. And they'll hit. They'll hit. 300 miles. The the top cars will be going over 300 miles an hour. At oh, the no. And they've got a mile to slow it down and stop. And they've got a, well, yeah. Well, they're throwing chutes. These are pretty high-tech cars. But you say it's a standing start. Standing start. Wow. I'm good. Texas mile. I'm good. Oh, yeah. it's, I'm it's good. awesome to watch. And then, um, uh, again, uh, uh, Cletus and Cars is tomorrow at, a tex at a Baytown drag yeah. strip. So Did I, you try to get a hold of him, Mars? Uh, no, sir. Didn't get that far. He and promised that he was going to do that, but that didn't happen. Apparently. Well, they, they come back from time to time. And then uh, 6 p.m. tonight is the Kima Car Meet. That's a standard. They're always Kima Car Meet's always happening every uh, Saturday night. And then t um, April 3rd is going to be the Galveston Island Bug Bash. Oh, boy. So if you are a Volkswagen fan of any kind down at the Galveston Seawall. Go get your bug bashed. Uh, you'll get, go get your bug bug fix. Uh, Sunday, April 4th, is going to be uh, Cars, Coffee, and Donuts at the Whitehall Cafe in Navasota. And there'll be a pretty sizable crew of people from Houston will cruise on up to that. Sweet. That's always a fun event to go to. Uh, American Muscle Car out at Kroger's in 99 in spring. And then Sunday night, Freddy's Steak Burger at 1960 in Eldridge. Um, and that's most of the stuff. There's other stuff all the time. All right. Time now for this hour's car review. Mr. Mars has the 2021 Lexus ES350. The F Sport yes, is Sport. a trim level for the ES350. That's why I didn't mention it in the opening because I don't mention trim levels. And you, but didn't, I, there even, you, go. you didn't even slow down when I tried to trip you no, up. No, hell no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Just you, you just you just the, have the, to the you have to live with the rules, sir. All Tell right. us about your trim. <laughs> All right. So what we're talking about here again, the 2021 Lexus ES 350 with the S Sport package on it. Now this is a luxury midsize sedan. The the ES 350 is a front wheel drive vehicle. Can't get it in all wheel drive or anything like that yet. And they redid it in 2019, so since then they've kind of been adding some things to it. But like a lot of other sedans now, it's got that coupe-like styling on it. It's got the big Lexus grill up front on it. And, of course, you're going to find things like LED headlights. Uh, the uh, 
<laughs> this one that we had, I thought it was so cool. It had a de-icer wiper. We need that. Well, we did a few weeks ago, and now yeah, it's 80 good. degrees again. We don't need it. So um, it's rolling on some nice 19-inch spoke wheels. We've got a rear spoiler. It's got a one-touch open and closed moonroof. And um, when you get to the interior, this is where Lexus is really standing out because this is, you know, leather seating in it because it is a luxury midsize sedan. With the F-Sport, we got the bolstered front seats. Of course, they're heated and ventilated because it is the Lexus. Had a 10.2-inch heads-up display that I really liked up there on the glass. Made it real easy to see a lot of different things up there. It does have the 8-inch color display that kind of sets up on top of the dash now, much like some of the other models, instead of being recessed down into it. And that's where you're going to find your Lexus multimedia system, your uh, all your convenience controls. Then we also had the wireless charger. We had the power roof sunshade. We had a lot of things in this vehicle because they go along with that whole luxury setup. Uh, if you're looking for a cargo space, 16.7 cubic feet back there. Now, you get up under the hood. There, uh, This year, there's a new 2.5 liter out, but we happen to have the 3.5 liter, 302 horsepower. Now, this is backed by an 8-speed automatic transmission. It worked really well, I thought. It was really slick and smooth because of the engine combination. You know, we've talked sometimes there's not quite enough juice there. Transmission wants to search to kind of keep things going. Nice and smooth on this one. EPA says you should be looking for about 22 miles per gallon on the highway. I mean, 31 on the highway, 22 in the city, and it combined for 25. The week that I got it, it rolled out to a nice round, almost 24 miles to the gallon, which I thought was quite convenient. Um, comes with the F-Sport, actually has a couple of extra drive modes. Standard is the Eco, the Normal, and Sport, but the F-Sport adds a Sport Plus setting, and it's got a custom setting that you can go in and modify how you want the transmission, the steering, all those kind of things to respond. And, and it really worked out really well because driving this vehicle, it's got the adaptive suspension in it. So you can kind of set it up to where you want something a little bit firmer if you've got some curves that you want to go on. Or if you're out on the highway on Interstate 10, got some new asphalt, and you just want to haul asphalt through there, you can set it up to where it's got a really nice, smooth <laughs> run on it. I like it. Now, if you're looking for something to compare it to, it's kind of hard because of the way this thing's equipped. You might look at some some of the German vehicles, but they're going to get really pricey. So I did find an Acura TLX that starts at about 38000 or a Genesis G80 that starts at more like 47000 But you can get a base ES350 for $40,000. That'll get you into the start of it. Now, the ES ES350 with the F-Sport is going to start you at $45,700. Now, the MSRP is tested with a few extra options, including some premium paint, it was really so, some nice-looking stuff there. It's yeah, really beautiful yeah. blue. Deep. Uh, deep. Yeah, deep, it's really deep. a deep color. So it kicks in now the MSRP at $53,770 for the 2021 Lexus ES350 with the F-Sport trim on it. All right. Thank you, sir. The In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Pandora, Amazon, and Podcast Addict. We're going to take a quick break right now, and our first commercial up is going to be about a special New thing right. at the Loopy Tortilla and the Sweet. Tailpipes and Tacos, so listen to this. I like it. The Tailpipes and Tacos monthly cruise in has become so popular, you'll be able to attend at more locations. Enjoy fabulous Houston car culture at any of the four participating Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex restaurants. Tailpipes and Tacos will be held in Tomball at Highway 249 near 2978, Bay Area Boulevard near the Gulf Freeway in Webster, the Grand Parkway just south of I-10 in Katy, and the Kirby location off the Southwest Freeway. Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and awesome cars. Mark your calendar for Saturday, April 17th for the next Tailpipes Pipes and Tacos at one of the four participating Loopy Tortilla Mexican restaurants, 8 to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. See collector cars, hot rods, customs, originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in this friends and family event. Start your Saturday off right at Houston's hottest cruise in. Tailpipes and Tacos, April 17th, 8 to 11 a.m. Participating Loopies are located in Tomball, Katy, West University, and Clear Lake. April 17th, in real time, we'll be broadcasting from the West University location on the Southwest Freeway, weather permitting. Is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? You found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, 
Just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at nwealtime.com. If you're in charge of your company's small, medium, or large business anywhere in the U.S., let the On Hold Company help you retain customers and promote your business on your telephone system. Promote special sales or company info when placed on hold. The On Hold Company provides custom on hold messages with professional male or female voices, licensed background music with no long term contract, no monthly recurring bill, and updates your messages as needed. Call the On Hold Company at 713 223 HOLD or go to onhold.net. 